What is up, everybody? This is Lyle with No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. Got on my Super Trucker headset because we're going to be talking about some Super Trucker type shit right now. And before we get into this video, what I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to up my bonus. So if you happen to see me out and about outside of my truck wearing my Super Trucker headset, that bounty has now gone to $100. So you see me out wearing my super trucker headset and I'm like further away from my truck than right outside the door you get a hundred dollars no strings attached if we're at a truck stop I'll run and get you the money if I don't have it so there we go now one thing I want to talk about is uh, being successful in leasing and one of the main things comes down to you have to have a bankroll okay now if you don't have a bankroll going into leasing, and I understand it, not everybody's gonna have some money before they go into it, but be disciplined enough before you get deep into your lease to stack aside a little bit of money. And here's why it's important. First of all, you're gonna be able to fuel more efficiently. Now I know there's successful lease operators out there that are telling you to fuel by the load and they'll calculate it out by the load and then they'll save a little bit of money extra and then you know to me that doesn't make sense if you find some cheap fuel jump on that shit if you think I'm wrong I was just looking at my numbers and I've been looking at these and I didn't want to throw it out there until it became a trend but I've always been at the top of the reefer fleet always been at the top of my fleet managers fleet but over the last four weeks in all of prime driving a Peterbilt 65 miles an hour I am number 292 and all the reefer drivers all right and number four on my fleet managers fleet now I can get more specific on that but uh, I won't do that for now but even if you go to the eight week average I'm still at the top and I'm actually even better at the current week average so at first I was thinking it was a fluke and all that kind of stuff and really what it comes down to is I don't look at fuel by the load. I look at fuel by the week or by the month. If I see some cheap fuel and it's payday cutoff, I buy it. And a lot of people will not buy fuel on payday cutoff. No matter how cheap it is, it could be 40 cents a gallon, they won't buy it because they're worried about how much money they're going to be making on this particular paycheck. You got to think longer term than that. And here's a good example have that bankroll set up so you can do stuff like this there's a load coming out of Tacoma Washington right now I'm on it right now I just picked it up going to Tennessee now this load was turned down by at least one driver I know that because of the uh, load number now why would somebody turn down a load going 2200 miles that's paying just under two dollars a mile the reason is which I've heard by a lot of people is they would rather take a less desirable load that's gonna pay on payday cutoff than take a higher paying load that's going to pay on the next pay period if you have enough money in the bank you can make those decisions to take a load that's not gonna hit this pay period so I got a load that's gonna pay you know four thousand whatever dollars on this load and you know what I don't care if it hits this pay period next pay period money is money but when you get caught in this trap of having to chase down paydays to pay your bills or whatever it is that's when you start having problems so why my fuel is so good obviously it's not because I'm driving slow it's because I'm able to capitalize when I see that cheap fuel you know we have a bunch of different systems with prime and I'm sure other companies where you can optimize your fuel but I even take that to another level and I think I need to get that get to that in a different video but I take that even beyond what uh, the macro 27 for people with prime I take that to a, a totally separate level I pump that up even more so I'm not even just using primes macro 27 but I'm enhancing it by 
because a lot of times what the macro 27 will do is it'll tell you okay fuel here and sometimes it'll say get 60 gallons here to get to this next place that has cheap fuel now you may not need 60 gallons to get to that next place you might need 30 gallons but it's being very conservative so rather than getting the 60 gallons I'll get 30 gallons to get me where I need to go load up there then the next macro might be you know 800 miles or 600 miles from there and rather than doing that I'll look at fuel stops along the way and see if I can find something even cheaper along that way than what that end destination is going to be so that's kind of how I've been able to hook up that fuel and the loads listen if you are choosing a less desirable load because you are concerned about what's happening on this pay period then you need to stack aside enough money to where you're looking at loads more of more on a month to month basis than a week to week basis because somebody turned down this load now I know it's heavy I know all that stuff but you're still looking at just under two dollars a mile you know what I could see if you're on load choice possibly and you're able to take a lot of smaller loads and stack up that money a little bit quicker but for me I prefer a longer load because it lets me settle into it I'm a little wore out right now uh, so I'd like to uh, kind of run this how I want to run it but uh, I don't know I see people and I'm not just saying this because it's speculation I have spoke with people that are telling me they are turning down better loads because they want something to hit on this pay period now to me that's if you just got into leasing then that isn't money management that's just you need to build up your bankroll but if you've been leasing for more than four or five months and you haven't got to that point yet where you can dictate what loads you're gonna take not based on pay period then you're doing it wrong I'm sorry I'm, I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that but you should not be just basing it on uh, pay period so in my opinion I'm a rookie so I don't know anything now as far as my fueling and stuff goes you know I have had and I'm not gonna say anybody's names but I have had seasoned drivers tell me that they're thankful for my advice as far as that fueling goes and I was telling this driver that it wasn't advice I was just telling him what I did and he said that uh, fueling the way that I had kind of spoke with him about it had uh, saved him a lot of money and it was good that somebody that's a seasoned driver can let a rookie driver know that uh, they were able to make an impact on their uh, bottom line anyway I'm out here in uh, North Seattle and i uh, taking a load out to Jackson Tennessee I'm taking the 90 I could have gone down so you know down a little bit south and hit the 80 gone through Wyoming but I'm done with Wyoming if I'm gonna be dealing with some bad weather I might as well deal with some new bad weather and go 90 so we'll try that out anyway that's kind of it I'm uh, about to shut this down and uh, get a little bit of a rest for all you solar power truckers out there it is now I don't know two o'clock in the afternoon all this good parking available I'm gonna get up about 12 o'clock you know maybe 12 30 in the morning get out there drive and the you know here's a good tip for those of you guys that are just about to get on the road driving at night is not necessarily optimum <clears throat> especially when you're dealing with all these mountains in the northeast stuff like that but <clears throat> what it allows you to do dang this is not no corona <clears throat> excuse me what it allows you to do is run your clock almost all the way down if you need to because you're not going to be worried about does this place have parking does that have, does that place have parking you're going to know if you're getting off the road at you know anywhere between 8 to like 4 
in the afternoon that you're always going to be finding parking so that's going to take that out of your equation so it is a little bit rougher to drive you know at night in certain conditions but i think that the parking issue to me is worse than uh the driving conditions but uh anyway is there anything else i need to say you know i want to throw out a little shout out shout out to uh Muhammad, you know, I spoke with him a couple times on the phone. He's a runner and gunner. He's out there in them late night shifts, so I had a chance to talk to him a couple nights last week when uh, I was driving through like Oklahoma, Missouri, all that kind of stuff, and I was getting pretty tired, so we had a chance to kind of keep each other company during that time of night. So I do appreciate that, and uh, anyway. That's about it. I'm going to get to sleep, get back out on this road a little after midnight, and I'll just be running and gunning. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for stopping by No Keepy Truck and Transportation. Do appreciate it. Comment, subscribe, and I'm out.